Excuse me. Connor! Oh, come on, you can't be serious. I'm afraid I'm very serious, Ross. You see, we found money at your house that was traced to the Paul Hartman robbery 13 years ago. At my house. Obviously, it's a setup. I have to take you in. You had to do it now? You couldn't wait till this was over? I didn't have much say in it, Dr. Bauer. The U.S. government doesn't give anyone special treatment, sir. <laughs> now I know this is a joke. I mean, you guys are doing a pretty good job. You know, you even look like one of those FBI stiffs. I am Agent Raymond Jarvis of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and this is not a party game. This is government business, and anyone standing in our way will be subject to arrest. It's crazy. Wait a minute. Who do you think that you're arresting well, here? You have a room full of witnesses. All right, hold on. Everybody, I appreciate what you're saying, but let me get this straightened out. The government is just making one of its rare mistakes. Okay? All right, we can do it the hard way or we can do it the easy way. But either way you look at it, he's coming with us. Go, let's go. No, 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 wait, 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 Don't look at me. I wasn't even invited. Look familiar? You want to explain how $100,000 of stolen money got in your house? <clears throat> Any fool can tell that I've been framed. When did you first get your hands on this money? I don't think I want to say anything else until I talk to my attorney. And who would that be? You know, it didn't have to go down this way. Cutter could have stopped it if he wanted to. I got the mayor on the phone yet, and they're trying to track him down right now. I don't want any of this to run without my approval. Why, our services already know. Damn. WSPR already put our bullets in. Hey, don't look at me. It wasn't my choice. Uh. Now, now, darling, I'm sure it's all a mistake. Well, I don't know, darling, but I... Well, I assume that tomorrow's... Custody hearings don't have to be put off. Now, just a minute. Vanessa is very upset. She wants to know how this is going to affect the, uh, the case. We'll tell okay. Vanessa that without Ross, Bridget's is going to have a hard time. Uh, darling, Bridget's going to have a way to win a, a case. Time, well, listen, I want Ross out of here and face me in court as much as anybody else does, okay? Probably more. Is that a fact? Oh, thank, thank you. you. How are you doing? Uh, take a cutter. Would you mind telling your gorillas that I am not a hooker and to put their eyes back in their head? Sure. All right, everybody, let's get to work, huh? Come on, this isn't Sunday in the park. You gonna be okay? Oh, thanks. You all right? Yes. Yeah. Take some coffee? Thank you. Is that guy bothering you? No, I'm all right. Thank hey, let you. me know. Well, you know, I tried to warn Chrissy and tried and I tried, but you know how daughters are. Oh, that's right. I guess you really don't. Not really. I'm busy. Go bother somebody else. I'm not truly a religious man, not in the organized sense, but God is really watching out for my little girl, don't you think? That and the long arm of the law. Do you remember I promised you? Not so very long ago, to me, that if you did anything to bring dishonor or unhappiness to Chrissy, that I'd make you regret it. The FBI beat me to it. Yay! Police department! You finally nailed them! Good job, guys. Need any help putting Ross Marler away? Just ask me. I can help you. Oh, man. You don't bring me flowers. Oh, 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 there's no good to lose my temper, I said. It's, it's hard being accused of something that you know you didn't do. Just stay cool. Hey, man, yeah, stay cool. I'm under arrest, okay? What's wrong with this picture? Am I in the wrong frame? The mayor is trying to track down the chief of police as we speak. Right? Yeah, well, Nick, I could really use a lawyer at this time. So, Sydney, 
How's your caseload? Can you take on your former teacher? You got it. Thank you. You saw what he did. He attacked me. Hey, you want to hold on? No, I'm not going to hold on. I'm pressing charges for assault and battery. Hey, we didn't see anything. Nobody saw anything. Yeah, would you have seen anything if I attacked Marler? What's going on here? Who is this guy? This guy's a piece of scum that just spent 13 years for, for stealing the money that we found in Marler's house. And your star witness. Well, don't listen to anything he says. I'd like to make up my own mind about that. You come with me. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. This guy's my caller. Hey, I'm sorry, Detective. You local boys are just helping us out on this one. We do it my way. There is some decency in the world, huh? Come on, honey. Let me take you away. Uh... And before he blows again. I just can't believe this. It just goes to show you never know a man until he's under pressure. Yeah, but I just, I, I wish I could do something, Dad. Well, honey, honey, you didn't do anything. You are not responsible for any of this. You're an innocent victim. Now, I, leave it to me. I will cancel the church. I'll cancel the country club. Would you like a nice little trip to Europe right now to kind of, like, just clear your head of all this? What are you talking about? Well... After what Ross has done. You Ross know. hasn't done a damn thing, and you know it. Ross Marler wouldn't steal a packet of sugar from a restaurant. Mr. Hardman, so why didn't you tell us how Ross Marler wound up with him? I never saw a nickel of it. My partner Ernie double-crossed me and made off with the whole enchilada. Well, I cooled my butt for 13 years. So how does Marler fit in? <laughs> like I already told the detective here, when this went down, Marler was the prosecutor, and he was as dirty as they come. He tried to cut a deal with me, but when I couldn't come up with the cash, well, he had me tried for 25 years. What happened to your partner? I don't know. Maybe Ernie paid him off and that helped him disappear. Maybe that's how Marler wound up with all those marked bills. Well, maybe there was never any partner, Paulie. Maybe you had the money all the time and now you're trying to frame Marler. No way, Cutter. He's been trying to get rid of me from the minute I came into town. What do you mean? He's been following me. He's been harassing me. Hell, he even decked me once because he said I was looking at his girlfriend funny. And then he accused me of trying to break into his office. Did you? I didn't do any of it. Just at the detective here, even Marler finally had to admit that I was clean. But he still went running to Cutter with stories about me having the money. And Cutter believe him. But you didn't find a dime in my place, did you, Cutter? Well, Cutter, you still so sure we arrested the wrong man? Sure. You know, you guys really know how to throw a bachelor party. You just don't quite know how to end one. It's the best night of my life. Wow. Ross, please stop trying to cheer us up because this whole situation stinks. Look, you know that we have an entire legal department over at Spalding. So if you need anything, you just let us know, right? I probably will. Thank you. I'll be there tomorrow for the arraignment. Hey, that same goes for me, Ross. And if you need anything tonight, you want me to make some calls, you want to bring anything oh, over? Yeah, David, would you call uh, my secretary, tell Dolores to cancel all the appointments tomorrow? Of course, there probably won't be any appointments after this hits the news. Come on, sir. Time to keep going. All right. Oh, one more thing. Just a second. Yeah, would you get hold of Bridget and tell her that her case is going to go along for as planned, all right? On the outside chance that somebody else has to take over, it's all on the computer. The questions, the witnesses, David, you know where everything is. Just tell her not to worry, okay? Please. Are you going to be okay? Oh, honey, I'm never okay when I'm not going to be with you. I feel a little bit like Thomas Moore, but I'll be fine. Can I just come with him just to visit? Once we get them settled in, we can give you a few minutes. How about you let me buy you a drink, Cutter? I don't think so. Hey, no hard feelings. Just all a day's work, huh? And a damn good one, too. You caught the big one. Come on, you deserve a drink. I don't see it that way. How long is she going to be in there? I suspect until they drag her out. You know, I offered her an extended trip to Europe. Uh, how would you like to join her in Paris for a few days? You really are enjoying this, aren't you? Don't underestimate our daughter. Bailing out on Ross is the last thing she'll do.
Another thing seeds your assets. Um, could I have a moment alone with my client, please? Okay. I wrangled a blank check for my mother. Thank you, sweetheart, but it's not money I need right now. It's Nadine Cooper. You've got to be kidding me. Would I be would I be joking at a time like this? No, I guess not. What happened? Bail was denied. I mean, the bail hearing itself lasted all of 90 seconds. At least Jim Haggerty had the good grace to look embarrassed when he told the judge that I was a danger to the community. Oh, I could have screamed bloody murder and gone straight for his throat. Yeah, I know you would have, honey. Ed almost did. Well, I don't get this. How, how could the judge buy that? What? Haggerty claimed that I was a high risk, that I was a risk to flee with my partner in crime, whom they're still looking for, by the way. You mean me? No, Blake, not you. The person the FBI suspects other than myself, Buzz Cooper. You and Buzz Cooper in cahoots? I know, I know. This whole thing is so damn absurd. Oh, so that's why you want Nadine here? Yes, Nadine. She knows that the money that they found in our house, it was put there by Pauly Hardman. But she's afraid that telling that story would damage Buzz, so I've got to talk to her and convince her that I'm on her side, I'm on Buzz's side. For heaven's sakes, I'll even be his attorney. Well, this is pretty unbelievable, but okay, I'll, I'll get her. Good girl. I love you and cherish you and thank you all the days of my life. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that puts me in a really hot bargaining position for life, doesn't it? Mm. So you sign this prenuptial for me, agreeing to um, never divorce me? Yes, absolutely. No divorce. <laughs> and will you promise to buy a tie for my father every year on Father's Day? Just kidding. I will get Nadine over here really fast. But wait a minute. How do we know that... Frank's father is really involved in this. Maybe that's a big mistake. I can't tell you that. Ross, if you have information, you better tell the police. I can't. It's attorney-client confidentiality. Listen, you're going to have to clear out. No visitors allowed down here. I told you I'm his lawyer. No, you're not. I checked. Now, out. And don't come back. This little caper's gotten you barred. Okay. I bet it was that miserable Jenna Bradshaw, wasn't it? Get your computer and over here. Thank heavens. Oh, this is a surprise. Uh, yeah, I gather you were expecting somebody else. Um, well, yeah, but I'm glad you're here. Come on in. I heard about Roth, and I'm very, very sorry about what happened. How would you like to be more than sorry about this? I beg your pardon? Are you alone? I, um, where's the baby? She's with her father. Why? Okay, good. Uh, can you go to the police station with me? Ross needs to talk to you. Well, I can't leave right now. I'm expecting company any minute now. Do you know what Ross wants? <sighs> yeah, he, he wants his career back and his reputation. 
He wants to go to court tomorrow, win that baby back. My nephew, who you took from Re Bridget Reardon. He wants to marry me in front of God and everybody. I'm sure Frank has received his engraved invitation. Please don't make this a really bad sick joke. What are you talking about? I'm talking about getting my fiance out of jail. Just so we could get on with our lives. And anybody with half a brain cell knows that Polly Hardman has set Ross up. But you are the only person who can testify to this. Will you? Well, I know Polly had a grudge against Ross, but that doesn't prove anything, does it? Well, has he talked about getting even? Well, talking and, and acting are two different things. Oh, come on, Nate. Nadine, I'm... You're not stupid. And neither am I. Listen, Polly somehow got a hold of this stolen money. He broke into our house and he planted it in the fireplace. I really didn't know that happened. No, really. I mean, I hardly ever talked to Polly anymore. He proposed, I refused. He's very ticked off at me. I really didn't know. I would swear on a stack of Bibles. I did not know that your house was broken into. I think that's terrible. Yeah, but you know about the money, don't you? Listen, all Ross needs is for you to say that Polly had his hands on the money first. Now, I know you don't give a hoot about Polly. You're just trying to protect your ex-husband. For the life of me, I don't understand how this man fits into this. But Ross promised that if you help him, he will do everything in his power to help us. He'll even serve as his attorney for free. I can't help him. I can't. Well, I'm really sorry you feel that way, Nadine, because I'm not budging here until you do. Oh, Blake. To tell you the truth, I don't even know where Buzz is right now. I mean, he could have skipped town. He could have gotten caught. He could be hurt or sick or lying in a ditch someplace. I mean, knowing how crazy and stubborn Buzz is, it could be any one of those three, you know? But I just can't take any chances with his life because... as crazy as he is, he's still the most precious thing in the world to me. Yeah, I know what you mean. I feel like I have waited my entire life to marry Ross. You know what I figured out the other day? If you add together the date of my birth plus the digits on my driver's license, it comes out to Ross's exact age. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Everything about that man is amazing to me. He's so decent. He's so good. It just breaks my heart to see him in that jail cell. <laughs> I can't imagine anybody suspecting him of anything worse than eating between meals. Nadine. Oh, come on. You gotta help me here. I can't bear the thought of Ross being in that jail cell any more than you can bear the thought of Buzz being there. So what are we gonna do about this? Oh, I've been told that there are two things that might keep Buzz out of jail and I don't know, maybe it could help Ross too. One is to give evidence against Polly and the second is to get the money that Buzz had the stolen money, if he had it, and return it to the police. Does that make sense to you? Is that well, right? I'm not an authority, but yeah, sure, it's reasonable. Well, now I wonder if Buzz can't do this himself because he's not here, or if the police will let me do it for him. Uh, they just want to solve the case, right? Nadine, does this mean you're going to help me? I, I've got my car. I can drive right down there with you. I can't leave right now. I'm waiting for delivery. It's a very important delivery, but I could meet you there. Oh, uh, how about five o'clock? Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, yes. <laughs> Nadine, you're a very good person. Just like Frank. Okay, five o'clock. I'm going to tell Ross. Agent Jarvis. Your partner, Buzz Cooper, has been cited recently. So if you want to make a few brownie points for yourself, uh, tell us what you know before we bring him in, now's your chance to do it. 
I can't live with this anymore. Buzz and I are in it together. We have been for a long time. We started out with extortion, a little bribery, Lindbergh baby, Jimmy Hoff. You're only making it Bill worse Aaron, for yourself. Judge Crater. Saw Buzz on the grassy knoll that fateful day. Has my fiance come back? I wouldn't know. As I recall, she got herself barred from visiting. You, uh, want these? Return to sender. 